Hi, and welcome to Master Maths Using Formulas to Solve Problems. I'm Stan Lyle. During the lesson, you'll come to some you try slides where you're asked to do some problems that we've discussed in this lesson. When you get to those slides, hit your pause button, try the problem uh, yourself, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Oh my goodness, formulas, they're so confusing. Well, they're not really that confusing. The more you use them, the more comfortable you'll get with them. I mean, you use formulas right now. 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's a formula. Any expression that's got a plus sign, a minus sign, a divided by a sign, those are all formulas. In fact, your mother uses formulas in the kitchen. Here's my recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Now, don't try to make this at home because this is not a real recipe and I don't think they'd turn out. But, let's assume my recipe for chocolate chip cookies says to combine two cups of flour, one half cup of sugar, eight ounces of butter, and eight ounces of chocolate chips. Is that a formula? Well, sure, it's a formula for how to make cookies. And we could rewrite that into algebra by saying C cookies cookies equals or mixed together two cups of flour two cups of flour and add to that one half cup of sugar one half cup of sugar and then add eight ounces of butter eight ounces of butter and finally mix in eight ounces of chocolate chips eight ounces of chocolate chips. Mmm boy, they're really good. You're gonna like these cookies. If you haven't done geometry in the past, you'll be doing it in the future. In geometry, one of the things we do is calculate the area of various shapes. The area of a triangle, for instance, is the base times the height divided by two. You can see in the triangle that the base is the distance along the bottom the height is the distance from the base to the top of the triangle and you multiply those together and divide by two and the formula looks like that well let's assume that our triangle had a base of four and it had a height of two all we gotta do to solve this formula is every place in the formula where we see a b replace that b with four and every place we see an h replace that H with 2. So, base times height divided by 2, when I replace the B and the H with real numbers, becomes 4 times 2 divided by 2. And 4 times 2 divided by 2 is 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Now you try it. Figure out the area of this red rectangle. The formula is A area equals base times height. And we give you the base and we give you the height. Hit the pause key, do this problem yourself, and hit the forward key to go on to the answer. I hope you got 18. Here's how I got it. The base of this rectangle is 6 inches. The height of this rectangle is 3 inches. The formula is area equals base times height. A equals B times H. We're told that the base is 6 and we're told that the height is 3 so we can substitute 6 in the formula where we see a B and we can substitute 3 in the formula where we see an H. So the area equals 6 times 3, which is 18 square inches. 6 times 3 is 18, and when you multiply an inch by an inch, you get a square inch. Try another. Hit the pause key, do the math, and then move on to the answer by hitting the forward key. Okay, hope you got this one. 
Whenever you get a word problem, it's usually helpful to CUCC the word problem. CUCC stands for Circle, Underline, Count, and Check. Well, in a lot of math problems, I just circle and underline. I circle the numbers because numbers are going to be part of the solution. And I underline the questions so that I know exactly what it is I'm supposed to do. Let's read this problem. A baseball player's batting average is the number of hits the player gets divided by the number of times she was at bat. Josie was at bat 12 times, so I'll circle 12, and got three hits. Write a formula. That sounds like one of our instructions or questions, so I'll underline it. Write a formula for batting average. Call batting average BA. Well, BA is an algebraic expression or a variable that's used to represent a number. So it's like a number, so let's circle it. Let's call hits H, and let's call it bats B. Figure out Josie's batting average, which is a question, so let's underline it. All right, batting average, BA, batting average is the number, well, let's go to that is. Is, when you see it in a word problem, means equals. So batting average equals the number of hits, number of hits, the player gets divided by, divided by, the number of times she was at bat. So there's your formula. The batting average equals the number of hits divided the, by the number of times uh, the player was at bat. Well, in this problem, we know certain things. We know that Josie got three hits, because we've circled it up here. And we know that she was at bat 12 times, because we circled that up there. So now we just substitute 3 for H and 12 for B in this formula and we can figure out the batting average. H equals 3, B equals 12, so now the batting average equals 3 divided by 12. 3 divided by 12 reduces to 1 quarter, and 1 quarter is .250, or a batting average of 250. This one's a little harder, but I want you to try it. The problem says the brown shape is a rectangle and the yellow shape is a square. The formula for the area of a rectangle is base times height. The formula for the area of a square is also base times height or base times base since the base equals the height. Find a formula for the area of just the brown portion of the total shape. The area of the brown rectangle minus the area of the yellow square. Hit the pause button. Try this problem on your own, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. This one was tough. I hope you got it, and I'll be proud of you if you did. What this question is asking is for you to figure out the area of that whole brown uh, rectangle, and then subtract the area of the yellow square that's within it. So, let's first decide that we'll call the area of the brown portion AB. And a lot of times in problems they'll tell you the, to, to find the area A, but sometimes they won't give you a variable name to use. And in this case, they don't. So I picked AB because it seems logical to me. AB to me stands for the area that's brown. So, the area that's brown equals the area of the whole brown rectangle minus the area that's cut out that's in yellow. The area of the whole brown rectangle is the base times the height. The base times the height. So that expression right there is the hair area of the whole brown rectangle. Now we want to subtract from that the area of the square. And the area of a square is the base times the height to the base times the base, or z times z. So the formula for the area of the brown portion is z plus 3 times 4 minus z times z. Now some of you may have gotten a different answer than I got. 
And I don't think you're necessarily wrong because I used for the area of the brown rectangle, I used the base z plus 3 times the height. And that was correct. But if you use the 6 and multiplied it by 4 to get the area of the brown rectangle, you were also right. It was perfectly correct to say that the area that's in brown equals 6 times 4 minus z times z. Try this one. Hit the pause button, try to solve the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you got this one. First, whenever we have a word problem, it's real smart to CUCC, circle, underline, count, and check. I'm going to circle the numbers in this problem. If it's a math problem, chances are real good that the numbers are going to be needed for the solution. So, your family goes on a vacation and travels to a park in West Virginia. The park is 375 miles, circle, from your home. Your car is full of gas when you leave your home. You buy no gas en route, but put 25 gallons of gas in the car to fill it up when you get to the park. Oops, looks like the question. What miles per gallon did you average? Okay, this isn't very hard. Miles per gallon equals miles divided by gallons. Now, an aside. Miles per gallon. Miles divided by gallons. That line right there means a couple of things, and you can call it a couple of things. You can call it a fraction line. You can call it a uh, miles over gallons. But you could also say miles divided by gallons, and you can also say miles per gallon. That line means per. So, miles per gallon means miles divided by gallons, and they tell us in the problem that we traveled 375 miles. So I substitute that for the miles. And then they told us that we used 25 gallons of gas to make that trip. So I substitute 25 for the gallons and I've got 375 over 25. And when I divide that out I get 15. 15 miles per gallon. Well, that's our lesson on using formulas to solve problems. And now it's time for you to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info, download the Using Formulas to Solve Problems worksheet. You'll find this on the Worksheets tab under 6th grade first quarter. Download and print that form and then solve the problems on it. And we wish you luck with that. Come back to see us real soon.